All right then. Today is August 7, 2020. This is a special meeting of the members of the State Liquor Authority being held somewhat in Albany with uh, the members participating by telephone or video conference. We have by telephone uh, Chairman Bradley. Yes, I'm here. Okay, and we have, as can be seen on the video, we have Commissioner Ford and Commissioner Fan. We also have on video General Counsel Meyerhoff and um, Adam. Are you there? Yes, Tom, I am. Okay. We have Deputy Commissioner Licensing Roberts joining us by telephone. And myself, Secretary Donahue, here in Albany. We have five items on today's calendar. There are requests from Council's Office for summary orders of suspension. I have all the five items, yes, I do. Okay, the first item is 929TT. It's York OP 128-1991. It's a license issued to Yardbird LLC. Outside for Council's Office. Uh, our Council's Office submits the subject licensee, Yardbird LLC, DBA Maiden Lane, located at 162 Avenue B, New York, New York, for the members of the authority to consider an emergency order of summary suspension of its retail on premises liquor license pursuant to Section 413 of the State Administrative Procedure Act. Yardberg was issued an OP January 20, 2015, and it expires on December 31, 2020. It is licensed to operate as a bar tavern with a food preparation area only with recorded music and a DJ. The licensee has seven principles, one of which was managing during the time of the visit. Uh, the licensee is in a mixed use area. Um, Two investigators from the New York Executive Order Task Force visited the licensed premises on August 6, 2020, at approximately 7.13 p.m. During the visit, the investigators observed at least 17 patrons that were either purchasing alcohol to go or consuming alcohol, purchasing to consume alcohol in the sidewalk cafe area of the licensed premises. Had not purchased food when they were sitting in the sidewalk cafe area and were not purchasing food when they were purchasing alcoholic beverages to go. The only food that was seen were bags of oyster crackers, small, approximately one and a half ounce bags. Investigators, while there, inquired with the staff who stated that patrons were required only to take bags of oyster crackers with their purchased beverages and nothing else. The investigators were told that cans of sardines were available for purchase for $10, but that no purchases had been made yet that day. Uh, during the visit, as I said, the principal, Garrett McCubbin, was managing the licensed premises. This is clearly not the type of dining experience intended to be permitted under Executive Order 202.52, which required that food be served with alcoholic beverages and the accompanying SLA guidance. The governor has been clear that at this time, the executive orders are meant to allow restaurants to serve food and beverages, not to allow bars to operate as if it were business as usual and as, and as if there was not an ongoing pandemic. What is worse in this situation is that the licensee, by requiring the oyster crackers, clearly was aware that there is a food purchase requirement and is still failing to meet that requirement. At this point in time, the licensee cannot claim to be unaware of the executive orders and the SLA guidance. The executive orders were designed to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the deadly virus, and this licensee clearly cannot be trusted to follow the law. At this time, permitting alcoholic beverage purchases without food purchases, whether for consumption on the premises or to go, 
has been explicitly disallowed under the executive orders based on Department of Health guidance as this type of activity increases the likelihood of COVID-19 spreading and thus presents an imminent risk to the public health, safety, and welfare. Therefore, Council's office respectfully, respectfully requests that the members summarily suspend this license. All right, with that, Commissioner Fan, do you have any questions? Council, can you see in the photos whether those containers are open containers? I see that you didn't charge that. Um, no, as far as the investigators were able to tell, um, any of the containers being served at the bar were um, had proper lids. I believe some of the patrons, once they sat down in the sidewalk cafe area, may have taken the lids off to consume them. But he, said okay. that he, could, not, he could not confirm that from the pictures they took and from where they were standing while there. So the, so the investigator only saw one open container that is on the form, but other than that, he didn't see anything else. Well, so he, he did check that off in the report. But mm -hmm. after speaking with him um, and what he explained to me, I could not exactly confirm that there was an open container. And so okay. that's why it was not listed as a charge. Okay, understood. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Ford, do you have any questions? Mr. Ford? No, no, I don't have any questions. I'm, have, I'm having some problems hearing him, so I'm working on that. But no, no questions. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting some background noise. Does, does everybody have their line muted if they're not speaking? That would be helpful, even though the, those calling in. All right, with that, Chairman Bradley, do you have any questions? I have no questions. All right, then I'm going to call for your votes. First, Commissioner Pham. Uh, it's been well publicized that on July 16, under 202.52, the governor and his executive order um, require all alcoholic drinks to be um, served with a substantial food item. Uh, this licensee has um, not done so and have um, only offered a small food item, which have been um, communicated by our agency that is insufficient. And for that, um, I am voting to summarily suspend this license. Commissioner Ford. Uh, Executive Order 202.52 regarding uh, violations for food and alcoholic beverage requirements by selling alcohol to go without food in an open container uh, has been in place for a while now. and. Uh, consumption of on the go is is not allowed uh, also selling oyster crackers and cans of sardines that doesn't quite cut it also failed to exercise adequate supervision uh, with customers purchasing open container drinks straws no food is witnessed by a patron actually getting into a car and leaving so i i vote to summarily suspend thank you chairman bradley I vote to summarily suspend on all the, the, the on the grounds of the other two commissioners. Thank you. Next item I have is 929 UU, New York OP 1026083. It's 14 East 47 Pub Inc. Again, Alex Floyd for Council's Office. Uh, Council's Office submits the subject licensee. 14 East 47th Pub Inc. located at 14 East 47th Street, New York, New York, to the members of the authority to consider an emergency order of summary suspension of its retail on-premises liquor license pursuant to Section 413 of the State Administrative Procedure Act. The licensee was issued a license on March 6, 1996, and it expired on April 30, 2020, the licensee is currently operating under SAPA. It is licensed to operate as a restaurant with live and recorded music. The licensee has two principals, Ann Riley and John Connolly, 
and the licensee is in a mixed use area. On uh, August 6, 2020, at approximately 6.35, a visit was made to the licensed premises. The investigators during their visit observed at least 20 patrons congregating and lingering, standing on the sidewalk in front of the licensed premises, all within 100 feet of the premises. Several were not wearing masks, were not social distancing, and some were drinking alcoholic beverages with op in open containers. There were also several patrons standing, not social distancing, and not wearing masks in the sidewalk cafe area that the licensed premises had set up in the street. This is clearly not the type of dining experience intended to be permitted under the executive orders 202.43 and 202.38, which require the patrons not congregate in front of the licensed premises, disregarding social distancing and open container rules, and require patrons to sit and observe social distancing rules in the sidewalk cafe areas. The governor has been clear that at this time, the executive orders are meant to allow restaurants to serve food and beverages while also requiring the licensees not allow their patrons to disregard social distancing and mask rules. At this point in time, the licensee cannot claim to be unaware of these executive orders and the SLA's guidance as, as both have been in place for months now. The executive orders were designed to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the deadly virus, and this licensee clearly cannot be trusted to follow the law. At this time, permitting patrons to socialize and drink in front of and around the licensed premises and in the sidewalk cafe area, as this licensee has done, is reckless in the exact type of behavior that will increase the likelihood of COVID-19 spreading, thus permitting an imminent risk to the public health, safety, and welfare. Therefore, we respectfully request that the members summarily suspend this license. Okay, Commissioner Fan, do you have any questions? Alex, um, do they have any information about food? Because I don't see any food. I see a lot of open containers in the photos. I do not see any food. I uh, was in touch with the investigator and he was not able to recall uh, fully whether there was food readily available and whether people were eating food, had finished their food, um, and I do not believe they talked to staff about whether they were serving food. Okay. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Ford, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Thank you. All right, Chairman Bradley? I have no questions. Thank you. All right, then I'll call for your votes. First, Commissioner Pam. This licensee has committed multiple violations of the governor's executive order surrounding COVID-19 um, by allowing outdoor service and groups of customers standing around um, outside the establishment um, blocking sidewalks and the like um, and carrying open containers and not using sufficient um, PPE to protect themselves against each other and themselves um, against anybody who may be walking by this establishment on the sidewalk. And um, this licensee is disregarding um, the rules that the governor has set. Um, and due to imminent threat to public health, safety, and welfare, I'm voting to summarily suspend this license. All right, then. Commissioner Ford, your vote. I vote to summarily suspend for the same reasons. Thank you. Chairman Bradley. This licensee through its behavior is clearly creating a threat to the public health, safety, and welfare, so I vote to summarily suspend. All right, thank you. The next item I have, 929VV, Queens OP125599993. Licensee at 340730F Rest Corp. Thank you, members of the authority. Um, the licensed premises is known as a trade name Domini's, and in fact, is located at 34 07 30th Avenue in Astoria, New York. Uh, that's going to be a very busy uh, area for 
commercial, including licensed premises. Uh, last, uh, yesterday was Thursday, August 6, 2020. There was a task force operating uh, in the area. Uh, in the afternoon or evening of uh, yesterday, August 6, the task force, including uh, fire inspectors, observed that there were people standing up uh, in the outdoor area, as described in the uh, photographs that were uh, attached to the investigative report, which has been uh, scanned under case number 146521. Um, I spoke to investigator Michael Klassen this afternoon just to get a better feel for what exactly happened. So the task force uh, earlier uh, warned uh, Roberto Mendoza, who's operating apparently as the bartender, if not the manager, that there were people standing up and this was not permitted. Uh, that it need to be uh, the outdoor area need to be a, a dining experience, not a, a, a bar type experience. Uh, the investigators then returned at approximately 7:45 p.m. and they were at about 8:15 p.m. And again, they saw the uh, same type of atmosphere. Atmosphere that being people standing up and drinking, some sitting down also, but essentially is operating as an outdoor drinking area as opposed to a dining area. And Mr. Mendoza, as he had prior that that evening or day uh, didn't have his face covering properly. Uh, due to the fact that there was some interaction with Ms. Mendoza according to investigative, investigative class and the, the state police were called in to intervene, I guess, which is appropriate. Um, and while investigative class and the other executive order investigators were gathering the information regarding the license premises, uh, investigative class and observed Two patrons being served at the inside bar, uh, cans of Bud Light beer and a shot. Um, I asked investigator Klassen, you know, what, what the circumstances were, and he said, Mr. Mendoza explained that he thought it was uh, permissible to serve these drinks inside the location so long as they took it out. So they did not consume inside, they kind of did take their drinks outside. Um, as well as when the uh, investigators were inside, they noticed a Cook and the premises did not have a face covering, and as well on the bar there were three pictures of pre-mixed alcohol beverages being a margarita, rum punch, and, and sangria. Uh, this premises um, it was operating under the provisions of SAPA. The license was issued in uh, April 18, 2012, uh, with only minor adverse history. Um, also, this premises had been visited on July 26, to the, <clears throat> excuse me, July 26, 2020, by an investigative, excuse me, executive order task force. At 7:39 p.m., for about 20 minutes, the investigator observed two tables: one with a single patron, one with four patrons. And during those 20 minutes, no food was being uh, served to those people, even though they were consuming alcohol beverages. The investigator approached the table containing the four people who states to investigators that they, quote, not ordered their food yet. <clears throat> Again, this was outside the licensed premises. So it, it appears that the, the premises is operating as a, again, an outdoor area with just drinking. Uh, the premises operating, it was issued a license as a tavern with a limited menu, uh, pizza and a few other things. In fact, Investigator Klassen said that apparently the, the pizza oven, which was operational, was in a closet, as I described, which Again, as I stated, there were fire inspectors along with this task force, and uh, they, they certainly took note of that. So it appears that the licensee was allowing persons to congregate while standing up. There was no food. It violates Executive Orders 202.43, which the licensee is mandated to supervise and monitor the area within 100 feet of the premises to ensure um, Open containers, open containers are not uh, permitted. Social distancing is is engaged, and, and persons are wearing face coverings. As you can see from the photograph, it looks like that at least most of the patrons are not wearing uh, face coverings. As well as the uh, provisions of Executive Order 20216 were violated. Ms. Mendoza and the cook were not wearing face coverings. Again, Executive Order 202.3 was violated by having indoor service uh, of the uh, beverages uh, last night, as well as um, 
if a food order wasn't um, accompany the, uh, the consumption of alcohol beverages on the July 26th date. So for all those reasons, uh, Council's office presents this matter to the, the board for a contemplation of emergency order summary suspension. It appears that conditions have been created so the transmission of the coronavirus is, is enhanced. Okay, then Commissioner Fan, do you have any questions? Commissioner Fan? Commissioner Fan, do you have any questions? Commissioner Fan? I have Tom, I have her connection circling here as if she's not connected or trying to connect. Commissioner Ford, can you, uh, do we have you still? Yeah, I'm here. All right, why don't we proceed with your vote? Are you, are you, have you any questions rather? No, I have no questions. Chairman Bradley, do you have any questions? No questions. All right, Commissioner Fan, do we have you there? Yes, Tom. Yes, I just dialing on the phone. I didn't have enough bandwidth to continue on the on the timeline. All right, I, I take you you heard Mr. Buckley's presentation. Yes, I heard the whole thing. Thank you. Okay, then you you have any questions? Then? I do have one question. You mentioned you mean, that during Tom. Um, Mr. Buckley? Yeah, that's yes, question. Hi. Um, so you mentioned that during the July 26th visit, you mentioned something about the pizza oven, but I didn't hear what you actually said about it. Okay. Uh, Commissioner is actually referring to the uh, visit last night on August 6th, where again, the, the premises is, is uh, has a method of operation as a tavern, uh, pizza and a few other items on its menu. That so I asked the investigator you know, to clarify whether indeed there was food available, and he did say there was a, they did have pizza in a, a pizza oven, but apparently it was in a closet. So investigator Classen more or less said. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. Just okay, Commissioner Fan, why don't you? Yes, since we have you on the phone. Disconnect uh, your video. No, the video was is on delay tom right but but we've we've gotten her in two feeds it's overlapping so commissioner fan yes i heard you i'm trying to turn it off i thought i got right. on my on my side it's actually turned off already but i'll turn off my computer and see if that helps no, no that's fine we have you on the phone that's fine all right so did you have any other questions for uh mr buckley uh yes i have one more question um did we send charges after the July 26th visit? No, that, that matter will be combined into uh, case 146521 to make one notice with the two different dates, August 6th and 726. And if I may, just to complete my, my answer, the investigative class in, in other words implied or outright, outright stated that this pizza oven in a closet is an imminent fire health and safety hazard and this premises has problems with that. Got it. Okay. So, uh, but would you say it's fair to say that they were already warned because the, of the July 26th visit? I don't know if the investigator spoke to anyone on the July 26th date from the premises. Um, it just it indicates that he just spoke to the table with the four patrons asking whether they had made a food order yet and they said quote i didn't order them yet close quote so it doesn't it it. doesn't seem that the licensee was on no so although i do i i let me correct i meant my answer though i do see again mr mendoza's id the person who was there on the uh august 6th day last night is uh, he apparently was there on the july 26th day because a copy of his driver's license was photocopied and attached to the report Okay, sounds good. That's all I have, I Tom. Thank you. 
All right. With that, then I'm going to go back and call for everyone's vote. Uh, Commissioner Fan. Uh, this licensee has clearly committed multiple violations of the governor's executive order designed to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic by allowing alcohol service with no food, crowds drinking um, outside the establishment, um, standing up and blocking sidewalks and um, not using sufficient masks for both employees and uh, pa patrons. Um, also, uh, um, having an expired license um, and uh, this licensee um, is not warned, but at least had noticed that investigators are out and that his establishment has already been visited um, now twice. Um, they're clearly disregarding this authority and the governor's executive orders and due to immediate threat to public health, safety and welfare, I'm voting to summarily suspend this license. Okay, then Commissioner Ford, your vote. Uh, the only thing I would add to all that that Commissioner Fan has just stated is that there were also pre-mixed drinks found on site. So I vote to summarily suspend as well for all the same reasons. And Chairman Bradley. I'm going to vote to summarily suspend uh, based on both on the same reasons as the uh, two, commission, two other commissioners. All right, then the next item, 929WW. Bronx OP 1267174, Olivia's Restaurant and Lounge, Inc. Before we get going on this, uh, be, uh, on this case, I'm going to have to recuse myself. I was at the location last night when the observations were made. All right. Thank you again. Excuse me, Robert Buckley for the Zone 1 Council's office. Uh, this is a location at 1854 Westchester Avenue in the Bronx. Uh, the license was issued April 29, 2014. Uh, the members um, imposed a condition the premises to close at 12 a.m. That's not really factor here, but understand that. Uh, in any event, uh, council's office submitting this matter for an emergency order summary suspension. Uh, it's based on two visits by executive order task force uh the first visit in question would be last night on august 6th 2020 at uh, from 9 42 p.m to 10 p.m <clears throat> excuse me uh the premises is is licensed as a restaurant and the executive order task force or at least 15 people congregating outside the location not wearing face masks the indication that these people were waiting to to be seated for dining. In addition, there were four other people, four males particularly, who were consuming alcohol beverages while standing outside the, the dining area. Again, not wearing face masks. Uh, executive Order 202.17 requires patrons to wear face coverings, and Executive Order 202.43 requires the premises to uh, monitor and supervise a, the area within 100 feet of the premises to ensure compliance with among other things, the face cover requirement, social distancing, and the open container law, uh, as well as the executive with a test force or a female in the kitchen not wearing a face covering, and a waitress not, was not wearing a face covering, and executive order 202.16 requires employees to, to indeed wear face coverings. Uh, there was a prior executive order task force on Tuesday, August 4th, 2020, and on that day, there were two males sitting at the bar inside the licensed premises. One had a full face covering. The other's face covering did not cover his nose. And apparently they were drinking a Coors Light beer at about 4.47 or thereabouts p.m. And Executive Order 202.3 prohibits any indoor service of food and beverages within the confines of New York City. And again, Executive Order 202.17 requires patients wear face masks or the type of facial covering inside the location. So it, it appears that by having these persons congregate outside the location, again, 15 or so uh, estimated, we're not engaged in social distancing. Uh, that is known to uh, create conditions in which the, uh, the transmission of the coronavirus is, is enhanced. So on the uh, the licensee has no other adjudicated adverse history. 
There is a pending charge for focal point of police attention that has not been uh, brought to completion yet. But based on uh, the reports of the investigators from August 6th and August 4th, the council's office submits this matter for emergency order summary suspension and uh, that the public health, welfare, and safety is being jeopardized and under section 401.3 of SAPA, the board can immediately suspend the license. If they so find it. All right, then, Commissioner Fan, do you have any questions? No, I don't have questions. Thank you, Tom. Commissioner Ford, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions either, Tom. Thank you. And last but not least, Chairman Bradley, do you have any questions? He doesn't count. I'm not. I'm well, that's right. Myself. He accused himself. I really should pay. I really should pay attention. Okay, now I'll turn to your vote. Commissioner Fan. Uh, this licensee has committed multiple violations of the governor's executive order by allowing indoor service and alcohol service with no food, um, drinking outside the establishment within 100 feet um, of its front doors, um, patron and um, employees uh, insufficient use of face coverings, um, and the lack of social distancing. Um, this location um, has some slight uh, previous history or an ongoing um, charges uh, relating to a focal point. And given that our investigators and our own chairman himself are continuing to risk their own health during the pandemic to enforce these laws, I can say that I really think that these locations, as they continue to put profit over safety, is wasting our valuable investigative resources. By now, it's been very highly publicized what the rules are and how they need to operate in order to do this legally and safely, but most people are just continuing to not listen. And so due to imminent threat to public health, safety, and welfare, I'm voting to summarily suspend this license. Commissioner Ford, your vote. I would add, add to everything that Commissioner Fan has said, stated that uh, there was piped music being played attracting uh, congregating crowds, not wearing masks. Uh, license wasn't properly on display. Uh, the premises was selling nicotine hookah without a license. There were compressed gas tanks that were also not secured and a gas can uh, with a gas odor. So I'm trying to think of what would a can of gas be doing in a restaurant in the middle of New York. Anyway, uh, I vote summarily suspend for all of those reasons. All right, then the next item I have is 929XX. It's New York OP 1024379. The licensee is the Cloister Inc. Inc. Good afternoon, members. Uh, this is Margarita Marcico uh, on behalf of Council's Office. Uh, I'm here to request that the members issue uh, an emergency order or summary suspension as to Cloister Cafe, which is located at 238 East 9th Street in New York. Cloister Cafe is a family owned uh, restaurant uh, by the Dro Drobeco brothers. Uh, the Mr. Nicholas Drobeco told investigators to Barley that he also owns the building. Uh, they've owned this premise for 38 years. Uh, this premise has come to our attention in a variety of ways, but uh, the reason that investigators Trevally went there on August 7th was because the New York City Sheriff's Office contacted him and advised him that they've gotten information that there were um, illegal parties, pandemic parties being held at this premise, and they showed investigators Trevally's social media showing that approximately three days prior to August 7th, this morning, the premise had a large party where there's dancing, people standing shoulder to shoulder, uh, and a DJ. And the investigator, um, Stravali, observed the video. The uh, investigator went to the front of the premise uh, right before the sheriff's uh, office uh, got there. He observed approximately 10 people congregating in front, lining up, waiting to enter. There was very loud music uh, playing, which was attracting this crowd. 
Apparently, somehow they got wind of the fact that the sheriff is on their way. There are uh, marked cars, so uh, people sort of disappeared. Uh, the investigator and the sheriff's office gained entry. They went in through the front of the premise where there was a bar, and toward the right, there's a door that leads to uh, what has been advertised in some social media as, uh, I think, the secret backyard. So they went to this uh, secret backyard and they observed um, an illegal structure that was really uh, three walls from neighboring buildings with a ceiling on top. Uh, they uh, observed uh, over 80 people inside the structure. They saw people mingling, kissing each other, drinking. Uh, they did not see uh, any eating, although investigators Duvali did inform me that he did see some remnants of food. He spoke to the owner who was there, uh, Nicholas, and um, asked him about, uh, questioned him about the receipts to see um, what food items were uh, reflected in the receipts. The investigator reviewed the receipts and found that they did not jive with what was listed. For example, it would say, one receipt would say one guest, and under that receipt it would list 20 items. So he questioned Mr. Durenko about how this could be. He felt that these receipts had been tampered with, and Mr. Durenko uh, explained that he thought that maybe the waiters or the waitresses had just gotten confused. Um, the investigator did say he saw food in the kitchen. The kitchen was operational. Uh, so in addition to being over occupancy, because there were 84 people there, when, um, as you'll see from the reports, they had an expired public assembly permit, so the most that they should have had there would be half of 74, which I think was the legally allowed limit in, um, when they had a public assembly permit. So they were way over occupancy. Um, they also, in addition to being over occupancy, as you see in um, photographs, uh, I believe it's exhibit five, investigator Shabali took a photograph of the roll down gate uh, he took that photograph standing from inside the secret backyard area. So you can see if someone's in a fire and they see this exit sign and they head for it, there's nowhere to go. There's, there's that locked um, roll down gate. There would have been another uh, exit toward the right of that, which is where how the investigator get entry, but still this, this is a very dangerous situation. Uh, in addition to that, the uh, uh, investigation probably observed that there were three compressed gas tanks that were not secured. There were unmounted fire extinguishers. Um, there was the obstructed uh, roll down gate. There were defective exit and emergency lights. There were no flame proofing for uh, curtains. Um, and in addition to this, although this licensee had never, I don't know what prior warnings he got from a government official, but he acknowledged, uh, the owner, he acknowledged to Investigator Stravali that he was aware that the neighbors were making complaints against him for um, 311 calls and um, violations of social distancing. And the SLA knows this for a fact because we've independently been in touch with the police department who also confirmed that there have been numerous 311 calls uh, brought against the licensee. So he, the licensee owner cannot uh, claim that he's not on notice to be violating uh, the law and this secret um, premises that he's created is just uh, he's just taking full advantage and, and, and carrying on an illegal operation. Um, there was I attached an, an article by um, written the Gothamist. I, I would not expect the members to rely on this as evidence. I believe there's plenty of evidence here without the, the article. But in that article, it mentions the fact that uh, there's some talk that this might be a pop-up party promoted by Provocateur, which was a club that we previously prosecuted many times. I believe before they had a falling out, the members had a falling out. They paid over $35,000 in fines for causing excessive noise in the meatpacking. So um, these same people are apparently carrying on this pop-up uh, party at this illegal, this illegal secret backyard. And uh, they renamed themselves Cafe Tucano. Um, now, this Cafe Tucano name is mentioned in this uh, Gothamist article, and it does seem to be borne out by this, by the photograph that Investigator Stravali took of the wall there. So, um, Investigator Stravali advises that the licensee owner was very cooperative, and he closed up shop. Uh, I just think he was sorry he got caught. Um, you know, I, I just. This is a surreptitious uh, nightclub going on in their backyard. It's illegal. Um, they've essentially turned it into an indoor nightclub in the backyard. 
uh, by using the three walls from the neighboring um, buildings. So, uh, and they're also operating a hookah, hookah lounge. People are smoking hookah back there. So, it's dangerous on very many levels, and uh, for that reason, we're requesting the issue of summary order suspension. Uh, yes, thank you, Margarita. Gary Meyerhoff, uh, Council. Uh, I just want to add that what's Ill, what's even more illogical than anything else in this case, where they may have not been able to uh, avoid a suspension, even if there was no COVID uh, pandemic right now, it looks like they took their backyard and leaned into the punch of this virus by closing off the the. By, by making it indoor instead of outdoor and continuing to hold parties and having as many as 70 plus people in there. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, there's no way that someone who uh, uh, recognizes that they have limited ability to operate in this environment could go and take these steps uh, to, uh, uh, to make money <laughs> at the direct expense of uh, competitors and people's health, et cetera. It's just uh, outrageous to me. Thank you. All right, with that, Commissioner Van, do you have any questions? Um, Council, I just want to uh, uh, ask again. So there was one referral from um, New York City Sarah, and then there is another referral from NYC, right? Uh, no, we, uh, the Sheriff's Office contacted Investigator Shavala and asked for assistance. Separately, we've gotten compl anonymous complaints. Um, the SLA has gotten anonymous complaints, and um, but you know, I did have I did confirm through the police department that there have been three one one calls made regarding this promise. Got it. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Ford. Do you have any questions? Just a couple quick ones. Um, you said the, the members had a falling out uh, with. Uh, club was a provocateur you meant the partners yeah i'm sorry i digressed a little bit um so provocateur was owned by several members and they had a falling out and they eventually closed but from this okay. article in gotham it seems like they're trying to carry on the business through these pop-up parties and um the method of operation is kind of similar where they have very attractive young women who were you know there and older okay. gentlemen were paying very high table costs and you know cover charges to go there and enjoy the company of these young women. What, what was the event going on that people were willing to pay $300 for entry and a $5,000, $5,000 for a table? What, what was going on? What, what was the attraction besides nice looking people there? Um, there was a DJ and there was hookah. And I guess maybe it's the novelty of, you know, um, violating the law and, uh, you know, having a nightclub in this secret backyard. I, I, I don't know what would have caused these people to go into this is, 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 the DJ, is the DJ on your MO? No. Okay. And the, uh, the last question I have, the Club Luciano, whatever, what is the relevance of that again, that sign? Oh, that, so this is what they're calling themselves now in social media. And um, so there's a Gothamist article where they mentioned these secret pandemic parties and they specifically mentioned this, this club, uh, this this unauthorized trade name in the article. And so what I was just saying is that investigator Stravali entered and he actually saw that same name on the wall. Okay. So, so the article in Gotham is, came out on August 4th and investigator Stravali there was on August 7th in the early morning hours. And there, you know, was this picture. So uh, that, and the Gothamist article, the, party the Gothamist article also does include some videos of dancing and things like that, but I wasn't able to give that to the members. Okay. But they think that that video looks like it was shot there in this place. Is yes, that uh, the, 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 yes, the, the trees and uh, the foliage definitely in the walls match. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you, Tom. Chairman Bradley, do you have any questions? Just one, uh, Miss Marcico, could you just make clear that that video, that that article and any videos associated with it are not evidence in this. We have absolutely no idea what dates those pictures were taken on or if they even are the location. Yes, Chairman, uh, uh, the members should not rely on, on the uh, videos or, or the article. Yes, that's like right. Said, it, has limited, it has limited evidentiary value because 
the videos are, are, are not dated. I, I just said in the report that Investigator Stravali wrote, he referenced the fact that the sheriff gave him social media. Unfortunately, I was not able to discern what social media he looked at. Maybe it was separate from this, but the social media that Investigator Stravali saw for his report did indicate that there was a party where people were shoulder to shoulder two days before, but I don't have a copy of that video that he saw. Yes, yeah, th this is uh, Gary. For the record, the point about the Gothamist story is that it suggests that this is the reason why we why we have uh, this type of group of people in this location, um, which might add some background color to it. But uh, the case before the members is there because they had 70 people inside in the midst of a pandemic and something that's been illegal since uh, March 16th and all the other violations that Ms. Marcico mentioned and that you have in your record. Thank you. All right, then I'll call for your votes. Commissioner Fan. Uh, this is a situation where I think you're speaking a thousand birds, um, hundred percent. There's a lot of people inside of an illegal party sending shoulder to shoulder with no mask, no social distancing, and in a nightclub atmosphere, drinking, I see no food. Um, and um, as council mentioned, there are lots of fire safety issues. Um, they're using an unauthorized state name and perhaps also using promoters, um, these licensees. Um, sadly have chosen profit over safety and um, have gotten the attention of both the sheriff's office and also NYPD is wasting valuable investigative resources on all of the agencies and is clearly disregarding this authority and the governor's executive order. In fact, they're not just disregarding it, they're actually blatantly challenging it um, by throwing these illegal parties. And so due to immediate threat to public health, safety, and welfare, I'm voting to somebody to suspend this license. Commissioner Ford. I would only add to all of that that the premise was essentially operating as a hookah lounge nightclub with a live DJ uh, with intoxicated individuals. Uh, greatly concerns me that uh, uh, not only did they have a large group of people inside where they weren't supposed to be, they also had emergency exits uh, locked, blocked, and uh, uh, which could have been like just tragic if something had, had happened uh, and people needed to get out. So for all of that and everything that uh, Commissioner Fan has just stated, I vote to summarily suspend. Chairman Bradley. So the one thing that the article from Gothamist does do is indicate that this licensee, after being in an article that publicized the events that they were throwing, decided to continue to have these events. Even if the article was inaccurate or not true, they continued to do it uh, as recently as last night. The, they showed a complete disdain for following any laws, whether it be our ABC law or the governor's executive orders, and they, they clearly created a danger to the public health, safety, and welfare, not just because of the virus, but as Commissioner Ford pointed out, by creating a structure in the back that was completely illegal and clearly should a fire broken out of that nature would have could have caused a significant amount of injury or, or death. Um, so I'm voting to summarily suspend, and I would recommend that they don't get a license back. Okay, with that, I have no other items on this calendar. Chairman, do you have anything else you want to raise at the meeting? Yeah, I do want to raise one thing. The one I, I obviously have been out and around New York City the last three weeks quite a bit, and what we're seeing a lot of is what we all deem hookah. Um, and what I've learned is that it's completely pro proliferated in New York City, and the ma large majority of the establishments that have it do not have permits, and the reason they don't have permits is because they can't get permits. Um, so what you what it amounts to is really illegal smoking because the hooker they're selling is illegal as well, even if they had a permit because it contains nicotine. Um, that's what that's what I'm seeing personally in many of the establishments. So. I'm going to have, you know, any investigators I deal with, I'm asking them to write that up. And I think we need to start taking that seriously because I can't tell you how many places I'm seeing it throughout the five boroughs. Um, 
and it, the, the large, large majority of it is illegal, and it is smoking in restaurants, which has been illegal for dec- a decade now or more. I just wanted to raise that because it, 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 I, 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 until I saw it, I didn't realize how much it has pro, uh, proliferated in New York City. It, it does, right. Chairman, Chairman it does you. seem to be an inordinate amount of it uh, in these cases that we're looking at these days. There seems to be quite a bit of hooker going on. And I, I don't believe that the New York City Police Department has a method of being able to enforce um, against these illegal hookup places. And like I said, it, there's nicotine in this, and it's illegal for the majority of the places. All right, then. With that, I thank you all, and this meeting is concluded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.